in 2020, I started to watch a lot of YouTube because of social distancing and to forget the fact that I have zero friends. While browsing through inspirational content, I found this video from Alan Wallace, a landscape astrophotographer from Wales talking about epic moon alignments. That motivated me to save a bit of money and get a telephoto lens to invest in my passion and broken dreams. I've been wanting photos of Hong Kong with the full moon visible in the background for quite some time now and although I did capture it previously, I was not satisfied because the moon didn't appear dominant in the sky. It was a tricky challenge because shooting within the city meant that I am surrounded by towering skyscrapers obstructing me of open views and maximize my focal length. So I decided to take it up to the next level by finding better locations to shoot from. <laughs> so this was a lot harder than I thought. This is a vlog that I've been wanting to shoot since March of this year and I never really had the optimal results because of a lot of conditions. So why don't we learn from past Heath's experiences and watch him get emotional damage. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! I start this moon chase on a bright sunny day with high hopes. I mean, look at that silly looking face of a man. Ready for an excursion to Discovery Bay, a nice posh residential resort around Hong Kong with a country trail and open sea views all the way to Hong Kong Island. I set up my camera to shoot the moonrise along Hong Kong skyline, and in typical photography fashion, wait for the good stuff that might not come. So the thing with moon alignment photos is that everything needs to go according to plan. Your focus, your timing, the position, and the weather. So I, I spent quite a lot of time planning this shot, and the way I did it is through the app called PhotoPills, which I already mentioned before. And another tool that I use, which I find very useful, is Google Earth which if you go into the app and then click on that yellow man and drop it down to a specific location it will give you some reference photos from other people so that you can see in advance what the terrain looks like and whether there's an opening for your moon alignment shot but if things go don't go according to plan today i did spend some time shooting yesterday so that i have some backup photos to share with all of you so here they are while I did enjoy taking these two images, I would have personally liked it better if the carts were smaller and could be circumscribed by the moon. That could be achieved if I was able to find a shooting position further away, but failed to do so as I was pressed for time. When taking the moon photos, you'll want to use a telephoto lens, and by using the longer focal length, you will achieve an effect called compression, which is a optical illusion of having the background and foreground closer to each other, which is good for visual storytelling of the scale of the landscape. So if you've seen those photos on Instagram where people pose in grand landscapes, that's compression. I knew there were a lot of things that might not go my way, so I did the most logical thing to do. Make other people suffer the same fate if things go wrong. It didn't take long for me to find out another obstacle for this shoot, the haze and poor visibility of Hong Kong. By the time we had sighting of the moon, it was already quite high up and was only left with these images. With a heavy heart, I leave Discovery Bay and my saga for a satisfying moon alignment shoot continues. After days and even months of cloudy skies, rainy bad weather days, and I still wasn't able to capture the full moon. <laughs> I feel so defeated. So yesterday was the actual full moon, but because of visibility issues, I wasn't able to capture anything. So just like a clingy ex-boyfriend who can't really move on, I decided to go out today just wanting to see her again and capture something. Another tip that I can give to you is to consider the actual day that you're shooting. So ideally, you'd want your moon to be low enough in the horizon to align it with certain objects, and you want your foreground to still be catching some light, typically around golden hour or blue hour, and this will allow you to avoid extra straps in post-processing later where you have to combine multiple exposures for a properly exposed foreground and a properly exposed moon and combining them in a single image. Because it was already nighttime when I was shooting, it was already too dark to have details in the foreground. And this was an obstacle because if I raise the exposure, the light from the moon will be overexposed and lose all the detail. To combat this, I had to take an underexposed photo of the moon and a properly exposed photo of the city and merge them together. This is a technique called exposure blending and is useful for high dynamic range scenes. It was cloudy again around the time of the moonrise, but did clear up in time for me to capture a few acceptable frames despite having to zoom out. Let me know which ones you like the most. Huh. It's a good thing that we're still required to wear masks outside because underneath all of this, it's the face of defeat and some acne. 
not the best possible images captured today. But I think that just means that I need to go out again next time and try a bit harder to nail my epic moon alignment photos here in Hong Kong. So do subscribe if you want to see those photos. Hopefully you still found the takeaways from this video helpful and enjoy the photos that I was able to capture. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.